Zip loses $1 billion. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein or $1 coffee, hashtag not sponsored while you still can. And let's have a look at this article talking about Zip losing a $1 billion. But before we do that, jump over to this screen with me. Let's check out the share price and it's at 90 cents. 90 cents. Now, uh, I, I, I remember when it was over 10 bucks, $12. Okay, it's surged up, so it's it's not looking good at all for Zip. I hope, those of you that bought this, I hope you took profits, guys. Please let me know in the comments. I want to hear your success stories about how you became a Chad and Salt at the right time and locked in those those massive gains from Zip because, damn, I hope you didn't write that down. I really hope you didn't write it down. Now, my first introduction to Zip was a couple of years ago, I think just before the pandemic, when I was buying a new battery and I saw these little thingamajigger, thingamajig Zip and Afterpay and I thought, what, what's this stuff? Is this some new newfangled, I don't know, slang or bullshit they're trying to sell us? And yes, it was. Uh, and I'm going, well, why would you need Zip to buy a battery? It's like 200 bucks. And, well, that was my introduction to it. I'm not a fan of it. I can understand why people use it. I can see how it's smarter than credit cards, but it also is just more debt, and it can grow as well. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the Dave Ramsey FPOS debit card, you know? Spend the money that you have. Australian buy now, pay later provider Zip reveals a $1 billion loss. It has been forced to close down part of its business and had to write off almost $230 million owed to the company. So, the Afterpay rival announced it was closing its UK business as part of a move to stem its losses. It comes as experts predict potential carnage for the buy now pay later sector this year as providers burn through cash, bad debts balloon, and customers retreat from using the service, a model which they say isn't sustainable. I always call it hipster lay-by. That's what it feels like. So, Zip's huge losses include a big jump in its bad debts, as well as higher operating costs, reflects a chilling warning from experts that buy now, pay later providers are at risk of becoming loss leaders and wholly unprofitable. I mean, I think Combank has a similar thing now. Just you can I don't know what it's called, but you can use it on your app to pay anything in four easy payments. You know, you can use Zip to pay your taxes. <laughs> I did my GST, and there was Zip there. You could pay your taxes in Zip. Oh, isn't it a world we live in, guys? A world we live in. The company's bad debts, which it was forced to write off, more than doubled from $82.5 million to $228.9 million. But the company said it has tightened lending and believes these debts have peaked. Oh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, was that during the recession? It also reported an $821 million loss of its goodwill and intangible assets in the United States, UK, Europe, and the Middle East, with the company company now running a strategic review of its overseas operations. I mean, this is the thing. This is so easy to replicate. And when your banks are providing you the same options, I think PayPal now does it too. What's the moat for this business? I mean, Afterpay had first mover advantage and then got bought up. Who's going to buy up Zip? Europe and Middle East are burning through $50 million a year, its results showed. Zip's co-founder, Peter Gray, said the overseas markets had a slower growth rate, causing their value to plunge, while rising interest rates had also lowered the value of its U.S. business. The buy now pay later's revenue rose to $620 million from $393.9 million last year, but it acknowledged that tough economic conditions would see consumers pull back on discretionary spending. But Mr. Gray said the company would cope with the downturn as customers have increasingly used the service for everyday items such as petrol, groceries, and bills. Now, okay, I mean, that may be good for Zip. But if you're resorting to paying your petrol, groceries, and bills in installments, we've got a problem. I guess maybe if you buy like a whole beast at the butchers, a whole cow, what, Last time I did it, it was a couple of grand, probably more now, you know, three grand. And that's a good six months worth of food for our big family. I can understand people using that because they're going, okay, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to eat good, clean food. 
I'll buy it in bulk and freeze it. But I don't think that's what we're talking about here. So there's been a marginal decrease in certain discretionary spending categories. Arguably, we're well-placed in a market like Australia. We have an account-based concept that delivers a significant percentage of our volume from everyday spend categories, he told the Finn. The concept allows consumers to pay for their bills, groceries, fuel, and the utilities, and the utilization has increased significantly over the course of this calendar year. I mean, it's just like payday lending, isn't it, in a way? Our broad industry vertical penetration off the back of our product construct is really well placed to again be even more meaningful to consumers as they manage their budget through a rising cost environment. Or you could just do away with this bullshit and go with the cash stuffing envelope method and cut the frivolous crap you don't need from your life. Remember, you can fast for a few days to save money on food. Okay, we're all fat bastards. It's a great way to save some money. And then you don't, you'll never appear in one of these ABC articles going, oh, um, the bank lent me too much money and I had to skip one meal. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. We're going to see them. Trust me, we'll see them. And there'll be, probably be something huge too. And, and yeah, no, I am shaming you. Guys, you know, look at me. I'm working to lose weight. We all can. Anyway, that's a finance. You know, I should Florian's financial advice is <laughs> other people save, make a budget, do this, yada yada yada. You know, and then you get all the all the YouTubers who will be shilling your shit courses and garbage. I'll say, don't eat your fat bastards to save your money. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna miss these one dollar coffees. Earlier this year, the company announced it was closing its money management app. That is acquired for $7.5 million, affecting 800,000 users. The company has also taken a battering on the stock market this year too, with its shares plummeting an extraordinary 76% this year. Yet SIP has declared that it could achieve profitability in the first half of 2024. Oh boy, companies that, that want to make a profit. That's such a novel idea, eh? Anyway, let, let's, let's talk about this. I hope you guys sold at the top. I really do. Please, please let me know some happy stories. I want to hear some happy stories because this is pretty bad. We're at a, I told you discretionary spending will be the first thing to take a hit. I hope people aren't using buy now, pay later to just keep living the same lifestyle because that's probably what some people will do instead of realizing, okay, we need to change our lifestyle as a family. That's what I'm hoping will happen. What do you reckon? And mortgages haven't even increased that much yet. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, would you buy Zip now or would you wait? Let us know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, take care. Check out my other channels, Heiser BIM and Heiser Says International, where I cover software and tools I use as an architect and international news that I discuss. Thank you all for watching. If you want to support the channel, there are a few ways you can, financially via YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband, buying our pocket squares and calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Ninety cents. Shit. I hope... Oh, boy, you'd hate to ride that one down.